I'm planning on making a series of videos showing the electrical distribution and wiring in a house in the UK. So I thought I'd start at the very beginning, which is, of course, the main incoming supply to the distribution board. And this is normally what a consumer would find in their house. They'd find the main isolator switch, they'd find two RCDs, this one and this one, or GFIs, and each of those protects a cluster of circuit breakers that then feed the final circuits. Let's take the lid off. This is a very modular system. It's quite good, actually. Um, some people may disagree with that. Let's brighten that image up. I think it's still focused down onto here. Yes, it is still focused. So the arrangement we've got in here is you bring the main incoming supply into an isolator. And it's worth mentioning that the switch with the red toggle on it, not always a red toggle and some of the really old installations that's just a standard looks like a standard circuit breaker and when you see it marked 100 amp it makes it look like it's a circuit breaker that's going to provide protection it's not and neither are these rcds they are marked 63 amp that is just their current rating they will not trip if the current exceeds that the only thing that's going to trip the rcds is a fault a leakage to earth or ground so it's worth mentioning that, uh, that just in case people, because there have been accidents where people have used these thinking they offer that protection and they don't, you do get a version that is optimised for that called an RCBO. Let me show you an RCBO. Here is an RCBO. Looks like a standard circuit breaker, has a little pigtail for the neutral coming out of it. And uh, this one does offer both overcurrent, 40 amps in this instance, with that B tripping characteristic. And it also offers the, offers the 30 milliamp trip current if there's a leakage to ground. So when you wire these, I'll lift this little plastic guard off the bottom here, you get the distribution board with various accessories. It's got a bit of, a, which, which is quite nice actually, it's a bit of flexible grommet tape for going around to the knockouts at the back where you're bringing the cables in, if you choose to bring them in the back. It's got spare clip-in covers should you decide not to use all the circuit breakers, because it is a modular system, you only use as many as you want to use. So it's got these that will clip into the front cover if you have a gap between uh, where a breaker could have been but isn't. And you have a bus bar that is designed to be cut to size and inserted and it's designed to common along the breakers. In this case, because this is a split load consumer unit, um, this RCD protecting this group of circuit breakers, the bus bar would go in this set of circuit breakers and into the RCD and uh, that would then bridge along from the live output from the RCD to this group, group of breakers and likewise the same over here. So the incoming supply comes in here, goes through this isolator, comes out the isolator and goes up to a common neutral bar. Now it's important to note that this can only be used then to feed either non-RCD protected circuits or the RCDs themselves, you'll notice there's actually three neutral bars in this. Traditionally, in an old-fashioned distribution board without RCD protection, it would just have been one neutral bar for everything. But because these devices, the RCDs, monitor the current through the live and then the current back through the neutral, you have to keep the neutrals separate. If you mix the neutrals up, if you take a circuit from here and you put it into this uh, breaker's neutral, then there's a risk that uh, it's going to keep tripping it false tripping because it's basically going to interpret it as a leakage current. Nice feature in this one, it's got a little uh, spirit level built in. The earth bar, which is bonded onto the chassis of the consumer unit, is common to all the circuits. So we've got the live and neutral come in, and it's notable that these days, uh, this is what's called a 17th edition Amendment 3 consumer unit. It's made of metal. The previous ones were made of plastic, which originally in the bad old days they were all made of metal and then they switched to plastic because it was cheaper and easier to work with but there were a spate of fires, particularly after the Part P fiasco was introduced because there's a bit of a downfall if someone who's inexperienced tries putting one of these together and uh, does a little thing that results in basically burnt connections and in the case of the plastic distribution boards they'd go completely on fire. So this is a metal one and likewise uh, you've got a the tails that come into it, which are generally double insulated, although these look grey, there's a two layers of insulation. It's the got the I don't know if you can see that, it's got the blue and brown inner core, 
insulation, but then the grey over the top. It's just for extra safety because these are exposed outside the unit. But these uh, could either come in through just a, a grommet, but pre preferably these days it'll come in through a gland like this, which has the two large cores for the live and neutral, and then a hole for the earth connection. Well, that's my stomach deciding to chime in here. Um, it would be nice on this unit if the knockouts had been the correct size for this gland, but they're not. That's a bit annoying. I'll have to use the double double uh, cutter technique to actually go through one hole and use it to support while the other one cuts. So the output from the main isolator here after you've brought your supply in goes up to this common neutral bar that's going to feed all the RCDs. And the live loops likewise through the RCDs. I suppose really they could have had a separate live bar up there, but that would have potentially result in quite a lot of exposed metal, so it's probably good that they didn't. So they've got a set of little tail here that's pre-made with uh, crimps that uh, take the two cores in here and one there, but it makes it a bit less versatile for expanding that out to divide it into other circuits without actually having to twist wires or double up in one terminal, which is always a bit annoying. In each of these, you've got the neutral coming from the com main incoming neutral bar through the isolator, and you've got the live looped across, so it goes through the breaker, the live goes along the bus bar, but the neutral goes up to its own bus bar up here. So if you've got a circuit, say for instance, we've got the lighting circuit here, which is rated 6 amps, and that's part of the reason they have these split load consumer units. They've got, uh, it's to divide the circuits half and half, so if one of these breakers trips, it doesn't kill the whole house, it doesn't just plunge everywhere into pitch black does happen here because I have, I'm on a TT system which does still have one common breaker for everything. And that does very occasionally happen, particularly if there's an electrical anomaly outside. Lightning strikes in the Isle of Man are very common for tripping off uh, rural um, dish, uh, RCDs and tripping the, the boards out. But you'd have uh, your, a lighting circuit would come out the six amps uh, output. And it, again, it's worth mentioning the do kind of imply that from the breaker it should go over the highest current loads leading to the lowest current loads. So we've got a 40 amp here which could do a, it could do a shower, it could do a cooker. Then we've got 232s which could do loads like ovens or ring main circuits. And then we've got a 16 which could do a radial spur, say for instance heating. And then we get the 6 which is uh, typically used for lighting. And the bus bar will go along those but this is a thick bus bar. I don't think that's really that critical what order they're in, but you know, I suppose it does make sense that the minimum current is ultimately end of the bus bar. The, by the time it gets down to the lighting loads, it's just one of those flippant little things. I don't think it's that critical. But you, you'd connect into your lighting circuit, and then you'd have to make sure that because this is off this RCD, you'd then have to come out that matching bus bar for the neutral, for the uh, lighting circuit's neutral on that. Things worthy of mention, and this is very worthy of mention. Where's a suitable screwdriver to hike this out? If you wanted uh, another arrangement, if you wanted a more critical circuit, like if these tripped out, it, it cut something out that you'd really wanted independent, what you could do, you could replace one of these circuit breakers with its own either non-RCD protected or you could put in an RCD protected one. And this just goes in like a ordinary breaker, but by looping it, uh, bringing its neutral from, with this cable, from the main neutral, and also looping out one of the main live feeds to this, you then have a complete independent circuit of all the others. And technically speaking, you can fill your whole distribution board with RCBOs, which gives uh, independent uh, earth leakage protection and overcurrent protection on every single circuit. It's worth mentioning, as somebody pointed out recently, though, these uh, draw one watt each. So if I filled this consumer unit with that, or supposing even I got rid of these two main ones and used them as two positions, so you could use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You could have fourteen ways of independent protection, but that would mean that the distribution board would get quite warm because these do dissipate one watt of power each. And it might not sound much uh, that small amount of power, but it all adds up. It also means that these circuit breakers that draw one watt cost one pound a year to run, just in quiescent current. So if you've got a lot of them, it adds 
up and it's not significant but you know it's still you know an ongoing cost of power consumption which you wouldn't normally expect in a consumer unit i don't know what these ones i don't know if these have a much of a standby current i don't know how active the circuitry is in them the other thing i was going to mention about these is and it's the a bugbear of mine, you know, it's partly the reason that there were so many consumer unit fires is that when you put the bus fire in, you have this little rising clamp terminal. And if I put that in there and tighten it up, basically speaking, let's just use the wrong screwdriver here, it clamps it onto the bus bar and makes a sound connection. But if I loosen that now and I was to take that circuit breaker out, next time I put it in, the actual bus bar could go down the back of that terminal where it's not making electrical connection at all. And when you tightened it up, it would feel like you'd tightened on the bus bar. And because everything else is on the same sort of din rail here and they're all clamped onto the bus bar as well, it would feel like it was snug. It would hold it up quite tight, but it wouldn't be making a proper electrical connection that can burn there. I wonder how many consuming units there are in the UK that have that exact situation that the clamp is not on the bus bar and they could already be burning up inside. Maybe that is what caused some of those fires. Sorry, five days is not enough to completely train someone to be an electrician and give them approval. It's just one of these things in the UK that money has won over common sense. Uh, what else is worth mentioning? <clears throat> because these are now supposedly fire rated, you're supposed to, where the cables come in the back, you're supposed to use a filler. Some people are squirting silicon in there and it's the vinegary acid liberating silicon. Then they smack the lid in the distribution board and it's full of acid vapour and that must be having an effect on the electrical contacts because it's known that silicon trapped inside uh, enclosures like this, if it can't vent, if it can't get rid of its the acid curing that uses to cure, then that acid vapour does cause corrosion of metal components. I wonder if that's an issue. Don't know. Uh, what else is worth mentioning about this? I mean, it's really very straightforward. You've got your main isolator, you've got each section has its own individual RCD GFI, which means that all the wiring is protected as well as the final load. Does cause Occasional false tripping when, you know, or if one item go down, particularly, say for instance, you've got a cooker on and the heating element and the, one of the elements fails, it can trip out the whole lot. If that happens, the procedure for finding which is the faulty circuit if it's tripping out continually is turn all the breakers in that uh, circuit off, turn the uh, RCD on, and then set each breaker and wait for a while and see if it trips. And as soon as uh, you turn it on, and that trips, then just leave that circuit off, turn the other ones on, and then you can then at least get the rest of the power on, and then analyse, find what is likely to have been causing that problem. Uh, that's more or less it. It's actually quite easy to wire. They're quite nice to work on. They're rugged. They're very compact. Uh, you can also, if you want other functions, because it's using a DIN rail, is that Deutschland International Normal? You can also put things like time switches or transformers inside, although, to be honest, I prefer having a multitude of extra circuits and keep that separate, uh, just because the more circuits, the merrier. Um, I don't like going up to installations and finding that as people have added circuits on one after the other, they've just gradually filled more and more wires into a small number of circuit breakers. That's not a good thing. I prefer it to be generously rated so if I was putting a distribution board in it anywhere I would always specify the biggest I could fit in the space a little bit more money doesn't matter and I'd also leave circuit breakers and spare circuit breakers other things worthy of note you used to get a tripping characteristic circuit breakers but most of the consumer ones are B that's the tripping curve it's, it basically is the maximum in rush current it can handle you used to get ones uh, as I say, that were rated for A, which had almost instant trip. They, they didn't tolerate any in Russia at all. B tolerates small transformer loads. You get a C version, which handles more inductive or in rushy type loads. And for industrial applications, I think you can still get the D ones. I'm not sure if they're still available because they're just indestructible. They're not, which isn't a good thing. But they are for really massive in rush current surge devices like welders. 
But uh, typically the domestic residents in the UK will have all B-type breakers. It's very rare that they'll change those. And if you do change one to the next uh, type up C, for instance, you'd actually have to theoretically do a test to ascertain whether the loop impedance was enough to trip that instantly magnetically. Um, in the event of a fault. These uh, breakers have two tripping mechanisms. They have thermal for slow lingering overloads and for instantaneous fault currents, high currents, they've got magnetic. So the magnetic will trip out instantly. But in the case of the 16 amp circuit breaker, you could run that at 16 amps continuously. You could probably run it at 18 or 19 amps continuously. It depends on the ambient temperature. It's not going to trip until a certain margin has been exceeded. And that, the speed at which it trips, it's got an actual curve, uh, a chart associated with it, will depend on the level of overload. So for instance, if it was overloaded at say 32 amps twice its rating, that's going to trip a lot faster than if it was just maybe 20 amps. But yeah, they're neat, modular, not overly expensive. These cost less than £100 typically. You're, for a, one this size, you're typically looking somewhere in the region of 70 or 80 pounds for one of these complete consumer units with everything included here. Um, but you supply the tails yourself and uh, the other fitments. Anything else worth mentioning? I don't think there is. Uh, it comes with this little plastic guard, which sometimes are missing, and that covers the uh, live bus barn connections at the bottom. And that's more or less it. It's worth mentioning, just because you've turned your consumer off at the isolator doesn't mean it's completely dead. Always test just in case it's been wired in a weird way and be aware that the incoming cables are still live. So in the case of this one, this terminal here and any exposed metal down here will actually be live. And if you're faffing around with wires and they go into that, it could cause a short circuit with the only thing in line for protection being the electricity supply companies fuse the utility company and typically in this place I'm guessing I'm guessing this property has a 60 amp fuse because just of the nature of the electrical supply and that doesn't sound much 60 amps but at 240 volts it equates to a lot of current it's about 16 kilowatts or so is that right just give me give me a second 60 amps let's just say 60 amps times 240 because it is still 240 yeah, 14, 14 and a half kilowatts. So actually tons of power, you know, for things like showers, cookers, uh, and other high electrical loads like ovens, all to be run more or less concurrently. Um, yeah, they're quite smart. They've not really evolved a huge amount other than dividing into the two sections. But um, it's a fairly robust, solid design. In a way, I'm kind of glad they've gone back to the metal cases because I didn't actually like the plastic ones. I thought they just felt flimsy and it didn't seem a sensible idea to have plastic enclosures for electrical equipment, particularly when it's handling in the region of 60 to 100 amps. But there we go, the classic British consumer unit.